We're here with Sean Andrews, the coach of the Marysville Monarchs. When you talk about Marysville wrestling, Andrews' name is associated with that for a long, long time. Uh, obviously, uh, your old man was the was the man there for a long time, and he's with us uh, a couple times a year on Matt's side yeah, as well. Yeah. What's the legacy like there in Marysville, and how much responsibility do you feel for that? Oh, wow, that's a well. First of all, I'm I'm really proud of my dad. He's getting inducted to Marysville's Athletic Hall of Fame next week, so it's a nice recognition for a lifetime of work for him. You know, he started wrestling at Marysville in seventh grade and was the school's first state qualifier and and came back and coached for 32 years and I think at 10 or 11 as a head coach but he's just been there for a really really long time so obviously uh, like any like any son you want to carry on a legacy you want to try to build on what he's done but he still comes in the room he's still you know he helped out the middle school for a long time so he, he's what I think of when I think of, of wrestling at Marysville. When you think of Marysville it's a division one program but it's unusual in that it's not a big city school. Marysville, yeah. you, know, you hear the commercials for places in Marysville, well it's just outside of Columbus, yeah. but it's a rural area and usually those areas have smaller schools, but that's not the case. So how does that help you with having a larger student population to draw from? Well, I mean, I don't think our population is any larger than any other Division One schools. I think what's nice for us is we're not in a situation where we're going to split high schools. So, you know, you look at the battles that a uh, an old Tangio, Westerville, and a uh, Hilliard are facing. You know, right now we're fortunate to be in a situation where we have one high school. So, uh, I think our kids take pride in that. I think our community takes pride in that. Um, it's a relevant, or uh, it's not the right word, evident from the youth all the way up. You know, we got a hundred and some kids in the youth program, and and so I think it's something that our community, our kids take pride in. Now, you had a state champ last year, Taylor Romani had lost a couple of different times uh, to the guy that he wound up beating yeah. in the finals. And they worked out together. They knew each other very, very well. How satisfying was it for you to see him get over the hump in the match that mattered most? Well, I mean, I think for us, you want all of your kids to, to reach their potential. And uh, I thought for a couple of years that Taylor was a state champion potential. Uh, I think he was good enough to win it. And uh, it was just, it was more just excitement for him. You know, and. and so we've had we've had a few. We've been on a good string. We've had a few state champs, I think four state champs in three years, and uh, that's the best feeling as a coach. You got the best seat to see the best reaction, and, and we've seen a couple bad reactions. We've we've lost a couple, uh, but you're just happy for a kid. And as the coach of the state champion, you get to hand out those medals, and and when you get to put that medal around the neck of your guy, what's that like? Uh, again, it's just it's satisfying to know, you know, years worth of work going to that six minutes, and so. Uh, you want that for every kid, even though that's that's not realistic for every kid. Right. Um, it's just a, it's just amazingly satisfying to see them reap the rewards for all their work. Now we haven't talked about this year's squad at all. Yeah. There might not be that top end firepower that you've had over the past couple of years, there, where there's a guy that a lot of people expect maybe to be wrestling Saturday night at the Schottenstein Center. But there are still a lot of big guns on this team. Yeah, you know I think uh, th this team's had the the benefit of. Wrestling with a lot of those guys, you know, with a Noah Forerider and Austin Farr, uh, a Hayden Lee, a uh, Taylor Bermani, and Alex Peta. So they've seen what's possible, and it's just a matter of working to reach that level. So we're excited. I think we have nine district qualifiers back, uh, 10 or 11 guys who started, got some couple freshmen that we're really high on. So we'll see. You know, we, we've, uh, we haven't really gotten into the tough dual meets yet. So tonight's a tough one with Central Cross, and it gives us a better idea where we are. All right, well, good luck with it. Thanks for being with us. Thanks.